Hey everyone, welcome back. So today I wanted to give you a September garden tour. It's almost mid-month and I've not got one of these filmed yet. I actually wanted to film it at the beginning of the week, but now it's the end of the week. We had a very abnormal cold front this week where we had a 50 degree drop. Luckily enough for us though, we did not get any cooler than 45 degrees. So you will notice a lot of the summer garden is still hanging on. We did have a lot of wind though. So a lot of the tomatoes are kind of pushed over. We've had a lot of rain, so the grass is overgrown. So the garden is kind of a mess, but I did want to show you exactly what is all still growing in my garden as far as mid-September goes. Having a cool down this week has been so nice, but honestly, it's just show me what's around the corner as far as weather goes. And I can honestly say, I don't know if I'm ready for it, which is kind of shocking because October is my favorite month and fall is my favorite season. That combination together is my favorite time of year. And it's right around the corner. It's like what, two and a half, three weeks away at this point. I think it just makes me a little sad because this year by far has been my favorite year gardening. The summer garden got so much bigger for us and I've been able to do so much more with it. And it's just really sad to see that go but I'm very excited for the next season to come and our fall garden is still going to be around so there's still going to be gardening that will need to be done just at a very lower scale and with that being said let's go ahead and show you the fall garden it is thriving with the cooler temperatures uh, we were having some really high 90s there for the last few weeks and things were not happy so this week things have really started to do very well um, I did want to update you guys on the hornworm issue because I was having hornworms galore in this area I did end up finding a 80 hornworms, which is absolutely crazy. I was on this area looking at every single leaf for two weeks straight. And honestly, I can say I'm very happy that time is done. The very last thing they attacked was the bok choy. So you will see that there's a few of the bok choy. I don't know why I'm saying it. Let me show you. So I direct sowed all of this bok choy, gosh, I think only four weeks ago. And look how big it is. It's starting to officially look like bok choy. You'll notice everything's just kind of dirty because of how rainy and windy it's been. But this is the last thing to get attacked. I actually found three little really tiny baby hornworms on this guy. Then you can see that all of this lettuce is doing really well. This is all butter crunch. This is romaine, these last like four or five here. And then this right here is all iceberg. And you can see they are starting to form a head, which is really cool. I don't know why, but lettuce for me is a very aggravating plant to grow. And I think it's because the leaves just kind of do what they want until they officially want to form more of what lettuce looks like. They kind of just flop all over. They look messy. You can't really control them. But once they get to this stage, that's when it's fun. Like this one here. Oh, it's so beautiful. That is a beautiful miniature head of lettuce. This is my first year doing any type of head lettuce or cabbage. You can see the two here and the two on the sides are smaller than the two in the middle. Those kept getting attacked like crazy. I'm really curious to see how well these will do through the upcoming weeks. They really just started to take off. Same with the broccoli. I had a lot of issues with caterpillars in this broccoli. So some of these should be a lot bigger than they are, but I do have a few that are thriving like this one. You may have actually noticed this little hoop here behind me and this is a project we are going to be starting for the fall garden. We are going to be building little hoop tunnels to overwinter some of the lettuce and the cabbage and some of the other things in this fall garden here. We are using this like I think it's a hog fencing or some type of chicken fence that we got from Tractor Supply. We used it to make our compost area as well, but it actually is going to work really well to make hoops. We were gonna buy little um, galvanized steel to make our own hoops, but we figured, you know, if we get some snow, that's going to be a lot sturdier than a few hoops. So I'll keep you guys updated on that project, but let's go ahead and show you some of the summer garden and show you just what it's looking like. So we have this one bee here. <laughs> Normally at this point in the day, this thing would be floating with a ton of pollinators, but honestly it slowed down greatly. So I need to go ahead and cut these back for the season. I need to take some of these deadheads and seed save these sunflowers. These were cut and come again sunflowers that I bought from a nursery that I loved. They got massive, huge, and big, but these were another thing that butterflies and bees just love. It was nice to have little bouquets of these on the table from time to time. Right beside we have the bell pepper area, which this is an area I want to do all differently next year. So these all started to get really, really heavy um, and just snapped. So you can see here, like this branch right here snapped. So these got tall and very heavy. They produced so many bell peppers. This by far has been my best 
pepper season ever. But I think I actually want to use my tomato cages for the bell peppers next year because I am also not a fan of tomato cages. This was the first year I used tomato cages. I actually staked these up the last few years. And I thought tomato cages would work better, but they honestly really haven't. Um, I want to use cattle panels. I want to do a huge cattle panel along here. I won't get into everything I want to do differently next year though because that's going to be a whole other video. There's quite a few things I want to change next year and that just comes with gardening and seeing how you want to do things different. But the tomatoes are doing really well. I'm sure you can see there's just a ton of tomatoes. I was going to prune these one more time but then they all started to flop over and I didn't want to kill the support system since they are already flopping over and the tomato cage can't really do much else. So I'm curious to see how much more I will get. I currently have five huge freezer bags downstairs full. So very excited about tomatoes this year. They did very well. I'm sure you guys remember me talking about my struggle with tomatoes at the beginning of the season. And I honestly think it just stems from us not having enough pollinators. A lot of my hyssop and things like that. Ooh, wow. That is a huge huge bumblebee. Hold on. I got to show you this. Little dude wanted to show off as I was talking about how pollinators really helped me out with the tomatoes this year because for a while there it really wasn't until I would say almost mid-July that these plants really started to pop off with a ton of tomatoes. And I planted these out what end of April I think which is I should have had a whole other round by then. So now we have an ugly eyesore part of the garden. This is an area of beans I'm actually letting go to seed. For some reason this year, it was actually hard to find green bean seeds. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and seed save all of these. I actually have another plant over here I went ahead and let go to seed. And then I have all these new green bean plants that I started to get a ton of harvest off of in this last week. You will see, oh wow, there are some really big beans all throughout here. I'm gonna have to come out here tonight and harvest some of those. So I actually walked past something I really wanted to talk to you guys about. So this right here has a very funny story. This is actually um, a few potato plants and I noticed these popping back up when I planted beans the last round. So if you've been here since the beginning of the 2020 garden, you will know we planted um, potatoes and actually all of these pots along here, but they all got this weird disease to them to where I pulled them out and clearly I didn't pull out everything from this one because we have some crazy potato vines going strong so we will see if we get any potatoes out of this because if we do that will be a miracle let's go ahead and go toward the front of the garden where the cucumber trellis is so i gotta show you guys these cucumbers because they are starting to take off i think here in probably my guess is two or three weeks we should probably have some new cucumbers they are starting to vine up which is very exciting they are looking really really good and also let me show you this dill so dill was a plant that I had pretty much zero success with this year, but this one decided to hold on strong. And in the last month, it started to look beautiful. Like how beautiful is that flower head? It's so cool. Personally, I hate the flavor of dill, but this is for pickling reasons. But over here, we have my sage, we have my thyme. I did have one of my sage plants die back. I need to go ahead and harvest this and make some more smudge sticks. My thyme is absolutely out of control. You would think that I have not harvested off of this at all, but I've harvested quite a bit off of this. Then to our left, we have the newest garden bed, which doesn't have anything in it yet. I actually made a video on this. Gosh, it'll probably be two weeks now. This is a garden bed I ordered off of Amazon. It's the cheapest eight by four garden bed I could find. It's galvanized steel, which is really cool. Um, I'll link the video below if you're interested in it. Then to the right, we have some more tomatoes. I went ahead and cut back some of this hyssop. I need to cut it back. Ooh, a little bit further. I don't know what I, oop, I just actually broke it. Whoops, it happens. So I need to cut that back a little bit further. Nothing too crazy here. This by far has been my favorite basil plant. It has thrived in this area. Like look how big that basil leaf is. And yes, I'm sure it's definitely time I need to go ahead and harvest that again. I've been harvesting basil galore. And then we have, last but not least, we have the zucchini. So let me go ahead and push this back. 
So we have these two plants here. They are quite big. I actually pruned quite a bit off of them as you can tell. It looks like I need to harvest this guy and pollinate another. So if you don't know, me having it in this little insect netted hoop house here, I have to hand pollinate my zucchini. So if you don't know how to hand pollinate, let me just show you real fast. So step one into pollinating zucchini is to identify the zucchini. So this right here is a female. You can tell because it has a mini fruit already connected to the flower. You can also tell because it has four stamen in the center. And then you will see here, this one is a male. You will see it's not connected to anything. These flowers tend to be longer and then there's one stamen in the center. So what I like to do is just pull off this flower. Let me set you down here a second. And I like to actually just go ahead and peel it back. These flowers produce quite often, so don't worry about using it for one flower. I haven't had that problem. And then what you're gonna do is take this, and we're going to take the center of this one and just rub it in there. And that is how you pollinate a zucchini. Well guys, I think that's going to be it for me today. I hope you enjoyed seeing the garden here in September. I know when I show you it in October, it's going to look so much more bare. So I hope if you guys are in the same part of your gardening year as I am, that you enjoy the last little bit of your summer garden. If you guys like this video and would like to support my channel, please give this video a thumbs up, leave me a comment below or hit that subscribe button. I will see you guys all next time. Bye.